We are going to start with another false rape accusation. So yesterday, I was watching an episode of E60. And this E60 actually aired uh, last May. May of 2018 is when is when the story aired. And it's about a shot putter, a female shot putter, by the name of Bailey Gibson. She's from Casper, Wyoming, which, of course, is the home of former Vice President Dick Cheney. Anyway, Bailey Gibson, she, uh, she set a bunch of high school records for shot putting. And because of that, it earned her a scholarship at the University of Arizona. Well, when she got to the University of Arizona, she started a sexual relationship with her shot put coach. Okay? Now, a lot of shit happens here. Years later, after she starts this relationship, shit goes completely sideways. Craig Carter, who was her coach, loses his shit, puts a box cutter th- to her throat, threatens to kill her, threatens to kill himself, threatens her family, and all the rest of that. Well, Craig, C- Craig Carter later got sentenced to five years. And let's get this straight before we get any of this started. The story that I'm about to break down and show you on video here, and, I, and again, these are just little clips that I just recorded with my with my camera phone. He absolutely should be in jail. He threatened to kill her. He threatened to kill her family. He acted erratically. The long and the short of this relationship is that he caught one-itis. She tried to end it, and he couldn't handle it, period. We see this all the time. The reason why this particular story caught my attention is because the girl, Bailey, accused him of sexual assault. She accused him of rape. She accused him of raping her for three years. And that's how the E60 piece started. They're characterizing this entire relationship as a rape. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I'm going to go ahead and put this on your screen now. I'm going to go ahead and start the video and we're going to break it down. Here we go. Bailey, then 20 years old, says she became intoxicated at a party. As the throwers were encouraged to do, she called her coach for a ride back to the team. Okay, already she became intoxicated at a party, right? So they throw that in there right at the beginning. Girl gets drunk at a party. And again, this is a false rape accusation. And as we all know, a lot of false rape accusations start with, I got drunk at a party, or I got drunk uh, at a bar, or I got drunk at a concert. Sweetheart, rape is wrong. There is no question about it. And rape is binary. Either it happened or it did not. But by the same token, females have to take personal responsibility for their safety. If I lock my bike up in a bad part of town, I can't, listen, I can't be surprised if somebody steals it. If women put themselves in vulnerable positions, they are going to be taken advantage of. Again, that doesn't make it right if indeed the sex was non-consensual, but you have to be responsible for yourself. This is why females continue to put themselves in these situations because they're not being held accountable. Here we go. Hotel. She says she doesn't remember what happened next. Oh, here we go. She doesn't remember what happened next. So already she is removing herself from personal responsibility. But says the following day, Carter showed her pictures he'd taken in the car. What were the pictures? Of me naked. Me. Him. Doing stuff to me. Doing stuff to me. Notice how she used the the doing stuff to me part, right? The doing stuff to me part, again, this insinuates, this insinuates that, that she is not, she is not, she doesn't consent to this. He's not, she didn't say we're doing stuff together. He, we are, she is doing stuff to me out and it was it was going to be bad she says carter then threatened oh, wait a minute hold on i skipped ahead give me a second here me him doing stuff to me it was just instantly like i wanted to throw up like how could i do that how you know how does he have that how how could i do that you were drunk and you wanted to bang him sweetie that's how that's how. And again, she's trying to she's trying to make it seem like, oh my God, how could he do this to me? How could this happen? You were drunk. You wanted to bang your coach. He banged you. That's how this happened. Oh, how did that happen? Bailey says she was too drunk to consent. 
there we go. Again, removing herself from personal responsibility. Too drunk to consent. I don't remember what happened, and I was too drunk to consent. That Carter sexually assaulted her. There we go. That Carter sexually assaulted her. Sexual assault is such a nebulous term. She didn't say rape. See, they don't use the word rape anymore because rape is binary, right? Either rape happened or it didn't. If a, if a female tries to stop a man from fucking her and he fucks her anyway, he has committed the crime of rape. But sexual assault has so many different meanings now. He touched my ass. He grazed my ass. He said something lewd to me. He made, uh, he made an off-color joke. Oh my God, sexual assault. He approached me on a college campus. Sexual assault. They call it sexual assault to make sure that the, that the definition is as broad as possible so that they can get every se- so they can get everything in. And by the way, guys, it's storming out here in Philly. So if my internet connection goes bad or if I lose power, that's why. Let's continue. And threatened her if she told anyone about what happened. He was going to post all of the pictures online so everyone could see what a whore it was. He said he was going to see. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. He said he was going to post all the pictures online, right? So again, she's making. And again, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened because I wasn't there. But I know what didn't happen. He didn't. He did not tell you that he was going to post all the pictures online. Why? Because rape didn't occur, guys. That's what this is. Sharp assist says sexual assault equals regret. Yeah, that's what this means. He just said that I would lose my scholarship, and I. Bullshit. He didn't say that. I would have all these pictures out and... Look at her body language. Again, she's nodding her head back and forth, blah, 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 blah. Guys, she's lying. And we can tell she's lying. Motorcycle Harry in the second chat says she's got a pretty hot, nice face. No, she doesn't. Fat chicks don't have pretty faces. Saying a fat chick has a pretty face is like driving a Ferrari that has a bumper sticker on here, on there. Get out of here with this. Well, she might be fat, but she's got a hot face. Dude, fuck that. I don't care how, quote, beautiful your face is. I ain't fucking fat chicks and neither should you. Let's continue. It was, it was going to be bad. She says Carter then threatened her with physical harm if she didn't submit to his demands. Again, I don't believe that either. He didn't threaten physical harm if she didn't submit to his demands. She submitted to his demands because she wanted to fuck him. Listen to what happens next. So she began meeting him regularly for sex. Either you don't meet me regularly for sex or I'm going to beat you up. This chick is what? 250 pounds? Right? 250 pounds. But you let someone threaten you physically. Okay, you threaten me physically, so I'm going to come and fuck you in your office. In his office and the team room at the track and field training center. Did you tell anyone? Mm-mm. Because if I did, then something would happen. Yeah, something would happen like people would find out that you are fucking your coach. Right? Listen to her excuse. Either to me, my family, or I would be shamed. Oh, sh- oh, that you would be shamed. Since listen, Oh, listen, girls go on slut walks. They proudly proclaim that they are sluts, but they don't want to be slut shamed. Fuck out of here with that. That's what he said. No, that's not what he said. You can tell she's lying. Yep, that's what he said. No, sweetie, you don't believe that. Check it out. What's going through your mind as you're getting involved even deeper with this coach? I don't want to do this. No. Again, listen, look at her face. I don't want to do this. No, 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 no. Just watch. I don't want to do this. I don't want any part of it. She's smiling. I just knew that. It, It just killed me inside every time. Again, that's bullshit. It didn't kill you inside every time. You wanted to fuck him. You fucked him for three years. And I had to do that. I didn't want it anymore. But I didn't know how to get away. Oh, but she figured this out a little bit later on. She didn't know how to get away. But she figured out how to get away later, right? Craig, this is Jarter. Portraying me to be this guy that raped this girl for three years when all along it was consensual. Are you denying that you sexually assaulted her? Oh, 100%. Oh, see, there we go. There we go. The guy says, listen, man, I'm guilty of threatening her and doing all this other kind of stuff, but I didn't rape her. Like, she came and she fucked me. Now listen to this shit. 
Carter says Bailey sent him several pictures and videos of herself naked. Oh, really? So he rapes you, then you're sending him videos and pictures of yourself naked. Did he threaten did he threaten to beat you up if you didn't do that too? And we reviewed several texts and emails she sent uh -oh. me with intimate language. Uh oh like this one. I don't want to end this with oh, you. boy. And I love you. Oh, I boy. do. Our relationship is hard. Bingo! There it is. We all remember the Tiffany Thompson Zeke Elliott thing. Tiffany Thompson sent text messages to her best friend. Yeah, we're gonna fake this thing. I'm going to falsely accuse Zeke Elliott of raping me. Zeke Elliott was still suspended for six games. Here she is. I don't want to end this with you. I love you. I do. Our relationship is hard. Yet, here she sits. He raped me for three years. Listen to this shit. There were texts from you and communications from you that would indicate it was a consensual relationship. If you can't say it's consensual when he's threatening you to do it, I mean, I'd have to say certain things like, I love you, or I have to do all these, like, Oh my God. Oh my God. She didn't even answer the question. She actually tried to answer a question with a question that it turned into a statement. If he's threatening you to make it consensual, no. The reason why you sent him videos and pictures, the reason why you told him you loved him, the reason why you told him your relationship was hard is because the relationship and the sex was consensual. That's what this comes down to. He did not rape this chick. I would have to meet him whenever he would like. If I would have to meet him whenever he would like. Yeah, she liked it like that. If I didn't, he would get mad. Bailey says she continued to have sex with Carter for nearly three years. Bingo! There it is. She continued to have sex with Carter for nearly three years. Guys, this is a three-year relationship. That's what it comes down to. And that her injury-filled career was further derailed by a coach who crossed the line. Okay, why would her injury, what does your, what does your shot putting career have to do with a sexual relationship? The reason why you weren't injured, well, I don't know, I guess, I suppose, I guess she could have been injured during sex if they were into some kinky, crazy, rough shit. But again, she's blaming her lack, she's blaming her lack of success in the shot put industry on her coach who, quote, took it too far. Fuck out of here with that. Everything about me was totally changed. I hated myself. I didn't look at myself the same. Oh, please, give me a break. I felt like I let everybody down. Oh, give me a fucking break. The fuck? I should never felt like that. Oh, my God. Did you see any red flags, Bernie? Oh, she's coming home a bunch. She's <laughs> Any red flags? Yeah, she's coming home a bunch. What does her coming home a bunch have to do with anything? She's from Wyoming. She went to the University of Arizona. Those are two different worlds. That's probably why she came home a lot. If you're being raped at school and you come home a bunch, that's not a sign. More than what she should be. But we didn't catch the signals right away. Didn't catch the signals right away because there were no signals. She wasn't being raped. This was a consensual sexual relationship. That's why dad didn't see the signs. Off at all. It's just a... You can tell dad doesn't buy this. Hard. You can tell he doesn't buy it. Now he's got to push the tears. Go on, Dad. Push out the tears. You're on TV. Yep, there you go. I get it. Bailey says her track coaches and teammates also remained unaware she and Carter were having sex. Yes, because the relationship was forbidden according to NCAA rules. He stood to get fired, and I, I don't know what the NCAA I, Listen, I don't know if they punished the athlete for fucking a member of the staff. Well, you know what? I've never heard of a female athlete getting in trouble for fucking somebody on the staff. A male athlete fucking a female student? I think the female student could probably walk away because they'll say, well, he seduced her. He manipulated her. <gasps> he raped her. Get the fuck out of here. But that changed in the fall of 2013. Oh? According to court records, that's when a track and field staffer told school officials she observed facts indicative of Craig Carter and Bailey having sexual intercourse in Mr. Carter's office. And she probably heard them. She probably heard her howling or mooing like a cow. I mean, dude, these are some big fucking people. If they're fucking in the office, somebody's going to hear it. I love how they say observe facts indicative of Craig Carter and Bailey having sexual intercourse in Mr. Carter's office on at least three occasions. Yeah, they, she, she heard Bailey getting fucked by the coach on at least three different occasions. That's what that was. On a 
least three occasions. Carter was called into a meeting with his head coach yeah, blah, blah, blah. and Whatever. athletic director April 20th, 2015. Here we go. From Tucson, Arizona. And a dark secret was about to come to light. Dark secret. Less than a month from graduation, Bailey Gibson, the former All-American thrower, decided to tell her coach, Craig Carter, she never loved him and would no longer have sex with him. But before confronting her coach, she says, she decided to finally tell someone else what she'd been hiding for nearly three years. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, she decided it. See, here's the thing. So she wants to end the relationship with the coach. Now all of a sudden she can find the strength to escape the rape. But interestingly enough, she decided to go to someone else. And you'll see who that someone else is. The reason why, the reason why she decided to go to someone else, gentlemen, is so that she can then accuse him of rape, right? She, she was going to tell someone else, hey, listen, I've been fucking my coach, but it was non-consensual. And because we know that hashtag listen and believe is in full effect, she knows this as well as anybody else does. That's why she decided to tell someone else before she told the coach. She beat him to the punch. If she goes and tells coach, right, then coach goes crazy. She doesn't have a leg to stand on. Then if she comes out with, well, I was raped, so they're going to say, well, why didn't you tell anybody? See, she thought this through. So right before she goes and ends the relationship with Craig Carter, all of a sudden now, now she wants to go and tell someone else. This was to cover her ass and to make everyone think that she fucked this guy for three years, but he raped her. This wasn't something I wanted. Her roommate, Julie Labonte. I was in shock. I was so mad. I'm her best friend and I lived with her and, you know, I didn't see those signs. You didn't see the signs because he did not rape her, gentlemen. This is what, again, again, John Barr calls her out. This looks like a consensual sexual relationship, right? This was a consensual sexual relationship. She had a bullshit answer, okay? Now, again, listen, again, I'm going to make this clear. Carter should absolutely be in jail. If you got, listen, this was all just, you know, amateur video clips or whatever. I just took my phone and recorded it, Okay. He should absolutely be in jail, no doubt about it. When you hear the, 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 the shocking details of the case, you'll know that he should be in jail. But this is another case of a female making a bad decision. She made a bad decision to start fucking her, but just to start fucking someone. She shouldn't have started fucking, then passing it off as being raped three years later. That's 100% fucking bullshit. Dudes don't, dude, dudes don't rape fat chicks and men with status don't rape women. ESPN giving credence to this rape allegation just proves once again that they are as much a part of the gynocentric culture as any other media outlet out there. Okay. Now, ESPN had actually done pretty well for a little bit. They made some changes to, to, to try to get away from this feminism thing. Right? They fired John Skipper, who was the who was they fired the president John Skipper and hired James Pataro back in March of 2018. James Pataro came in and made sweeping changes. Fired Jamel Hill, who was always running off at the mouth about social justice warrior politics. Jamel Hill also encouraged viewers to boycott NFL sponsors. Why is this dumb as fuck? Because ESPN, her employer, has a contract with the NFL for Monday Night Football. Jamel Hill stayed out of pocket. She got Sports Center the, at six o'clock. They called it the six. She got that taken off the air because of her bullshit shenanigans and so much and so on and so forth. Listen, typical angry black female feminist. That's how this is. Now Hill had been protected by the Disney CEO Bob Iger, but Pataro got rid of her immediately. Pataro also took Michelle Beadle off of Get Up after the whole Urban Meyer punishment came down. Open your ears and listen, white men. That was it. Pizarro had enough. He got rid of her, and now and and now she does NBA countdown with you know with with, with a bunch of NBA guys. He she was out. Mike Greenberg was in. Pizarro then came out and said, "You know what? We're not going to be a political network." And he talked about those changes. But it is clear that allowing this E60 piece to run just a few months after he replaced Skipper, that it's business as usual at ESPN. And what is business as usual at ESPN? 
This is insulting and berating its customer base. Men between the ages of 18 and, I don't know, 40, 45, maybe even a little bit older. Unbelievable. Listen, this shouldn't surprise me, okay? It, it, it didn't surprise me. It didn't shock me, but this this is what it is. You think ESPN is going gonna, is gonna to turn the corner? Nope. I guess they never did. I guess that was just window dressing when they got rid of John Skipper.